Hi, this is Joe Hage. I have the privilege of leading your medical devices group, which as of this recording has more than a quarter million members worldwide. And I also specialize in marketing communication and strategy, lead generation and website development for medical device and related companies. So I'm going to take you through today how medical device sites are evolving. And I'm going to spend the entire hour cramming as much information that you can use um, into it. Uh, there are a lot of slides. I may breeze through some of them, um, but know that they are going to be available for you after this presentation. So yes, all the slides will be available. This recording will be available, and I'll also have a transcript. You'll see that um, the presentation, I've loaded links throughout it, which will be clickable on the PDF. So you don't have to write these down unless you want to. Um, I'm going to, um, this conversation is completely free. I'm not looking to make a sale. But if at the end of it uh, you want to spend more time with me, invest uh, more in your marketing or your medical device site, and you'd like to reach out to me, you're certainly welcome to do that. There's a link here at medicalmarkcom.com slash workshop offer that you can take advantage of. But I'm going to spend as much time as I can uh, sharing information with you now. And if you like what you see, give me a call. Sound fair? Great. Before I start, uh, I'm thinking about uh, a new conference uh, that is going to focus exclusively on marketing, sales, and business development for medical devices. I'm thinking about B2B and direct-to-consumer. I see my friend Simon on the line. Um, you're welcome to send me an email at jhagetmedicalmarcom for information or suggestions. Uh, you can type in that box on the side there for you if you uh, want to contact me about that as well. Okay, so first um, I'm going to show you how I've taken my own medicine on the content that I'm sharing with you today. This is a screen capture of the 2013 10X Medical Device Conference, which I look at it now and it just looks terrible to me. Um, but it worked two years ago. Last year I changed it because I had some social proof, so I put a video right up front showing people loving it and seeing who the speakers are. Um, and the point I'd like to make about this is this site's still quite serviceable. I could have easily just changed the dates and change the names and the like, but uh, this one just didn't do it for me anymore. So I've upgraded yet again to this site. So in three years, I'm on my third iteration of a site. Uh, this one's far more contemporary, and uh, the engagement I've had on this site has easily surpassed uh, what I've seen in the past. So uh, my point for you is your website's probably okay, um, but there's still things that you might tweak here and there that could be useful. So now it's time to take your medicine. I asked the group, which adjective best describes your company's site? And you can see your results there. So on average, uh, you guys said that you felt your sites were somewhere between bad and okay. So, um, yes, definitely some room for improvement. And I took a look at some of the uh, URLs you suggested, and uh, I agree. Before I go through the individual screens, let me give you some tools you can use on your own. First, and you can click here for a short video when the PDF is available, what I like to say about digital marketing is it boils down to three things. First, get found. That is, if I Google you, will I find you? Be engaging. If I get to your page, will I be engaged or will I leave immediately because it's not what I wanted? And third, can you find out who I was um, without me filling out a contact us page, which is typically about you and not about me? Um, I will fill out a contact us page if I'm ready for a salesperson to call me, but most often I'm not. I just want more information. So that's one of the uh, primary tenants I offer uh, for you to think about. This is a fantastic book. 
Uh, it's called Don't Make Me Think. My friend Martin, who's on the line with me, uh, made me aware of it. And I definitely recommend you give this a read if you're serious about uh, web design. Uh, here's an example of a page from the book. And I just really like how simply he puts this. What, what we build is we need to have all that information on there. We want to make sure everyone can find everything. And in fact, people scan very quickly. If they can't find what they want, they leave. So uh, don't make me think is uh, just a, a, a Bible of saying how to simplify, 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 as does this book letting go of the words, and uh, Ginny suggests in it that, and I love the way she does these happy faces and sad faces, pointing out specific examples of how you could make it simpler, simpler, simpler. Fewer words are typically better, perhaps not for SEO, which is a subject outside the scope of today's conversation, but for your human users, um, as simple, as simple as you can make it. Okay, I discovered this site, Broken Link Check, just this week, in fact, and I got a bad grade. 56 ouches of broken URLs on my own site, uh, which, by the way, I have since cleaned up. So uh, go to this site and see how many broken links you might have. Just a side note, I found that most of my broken URLs were in the comments, how people left their website and they changed it. Um, but still, I went and cleaned them all up. Here's another um, good site for you to take a look at. It's a Google product. It's also free. And frankly, I went here last night as I was putting the final, sh final touches on this presentation, and I looked up how I did. And uh, yeah, I got more ouchies on that one. Uh, so it told me that uh, basically through things that, frankly, are over my head a little bit, but not Martin's, who's on the phone and will take care of this right after this presentation, right, Martin? Um, about my desktop and my mobile um, speed and some things that I could do to make my site load faster and more consistently. So take a look at that as well. Here's a study from 2013. It says that carousels, those sliders at the top that were quite in vogue, and frankly, I have one on Medical Marcom, which will soon change. Um, but nobody is looking at all the other things beyond position one. So just be aware of that. All right, this is a really old photo, but I couldn't find a better one last night. Uh, the point of this is uh, your mobile site is different than your desktop site. You need to pare down what is on there because the user experience is even briefer. So when you think about, oh, I have a good website, you probably do for a desktop. But unless you've built a separate occasion for your mobile presence, you might be um, disappointing some mobile users, which, of course, as you know, are increasing as a percent of your total traffic. And this slide uh, is just saying that uh, for my 10x site, for example, every time somebody writes me and says, I can't make something load properly, invariably, they're on Internet Explorer. And worse, uh, they're probably on an older version, and it makes it almost impossible um, to accommodate them unless, and I'm thinking about it, unless I hire someone to go ahead and write code specifically for IE6 and IE7. Uh, it's like, should I do it? I don't know. I mean, uh, people with IE7 are still people who might want to buy something. On the other hand, you know, what's the trade-off? How much am I willing to spend to accommodate an outdated browser? So. You might be checking out your site on Chrome's latest, uh, recognize that there's somebody somewhere using IE6 and they can't see anything that you've done. Check out Usability Hub, also clickable from the presentation. Um, basically, it's, 
it's split testing, but in an offline environment. So uh, right now on the 10x site, I have a pop-up as people are leaving, and we'll leave the whether you like pop-ups or not discussion for another time. Um, I can tell you that they work. Um, and so I did a simple split test. I wondered if the avatar I use on LinkedIn would be better than a picture of me shaking people's hands at a 10x event. And the answer was resoundingly no. We want to see the group. So simple. Did that make incremental sales? Probably not, but it's good to know. So then I did a second test and I said, what language is more powerful? Should I say, would you like to see which CEOs are coming? Or you need to see which CEOs are coming. And while this one wasn't as strong a split, I decided to go with alternative two because that's what people who took a look at it in an unbiased way told me. And actually, today's pop-up is even different because I asked another question, which is too broad to go into here. And I asked if giving you a copy of the brochure and a copy of the guest list was the most compelling thing I could give you to uh, invite you to leave your contact information. Remember I talked about three things. We talked about get found, be engaging, and collect info. Well, here's a way I collect info. And this has been up for three weeks, and I have three dozen people who filled in this form, all of whom may have left the site without me ever having known that they were there. So uh, Martin, who's on the line, asked me, do I want to spend $170 on this plugin? The answer is yes, quite definitively. I knew it would pay back. And folks told me on Usability Hub, give me a discount. And I thought, oh, I don't want to give a discount to everybody who shows up. But I put it here in the copy. The discount is inconsequential. It will help me track where people came from. And uh, it's working. Another resource for you, um, the testing that I did for my first website on uh, the 2013 10X. I have a recording with the fellow that I did the testing with there at this location. Uh, you can watch a video of how we went through that. And there's a lot of other marketing stuff I uh, covered in a webinar that I did a year and a half ago. You're welcome to go back and view that as well. Okay, this is the part I promised. Uh, here are pictures that I took in 2012 of 33 uh, life science medical device websites and what they look like today. So I'm not going to have something super duper smart to say about every screen. Uh, I have a lot of slides to go through and uh, these are definitely going to be helpful for you when you come back later. So this is 2012 and here we are in 2014. This one really didn't change and I wanted to include it because not everyone changed. Uh, I do have here in the bottom left-hand corner this box, and my advice to you is don't leave a link on your homepage that said, Bill made my site. It just makes you look cheap. Uh, it's silly. So, you know, pay your designer and your coder what uh, he or she deserve, but no, I'm not putting your link on my homepage. Don't do that. Here's Vision Sciences before, and I'm going to direct your attention up here. After, not a lot of change. You know, it looks a little different. Not a lot of change. I'm pointing out here that they changed the social sharing uh, buttons that they have here. They took out their blog uh, spot uh, piece. I'll just also note that this is an outdated YouTube logo. So, you know, make sure you're using the most current art. MTS before, MTS after, they were acquired by Omnicell, and I thought this was interesting. Before, you know, there's a lot of language here. Ginny would not be happy with this screen, neither is Joey, frankly. Um, but I kind of got a better sense of what it was here than here. Increase operational efficiency, explore our solutions, tells me a lot of nothing. Um, Make sure that your homepage doesn't say a lot of nothing. Here's Aura before and after. Um, Verisante actually is the, the company. And 
I, I like what they did here. Um, are you a medical professional? Are you a patient? They give people a choice to go into what part of the site they want. Uh, and I thought that this was just a nicer treatment. But that's subjective. Uh, what's more relevant is how it tests and, and how um, navigatable it is. This one's interesting. Here's Animas. And just a few weeks ago, I took the screen capture. Um, so they are still focusing on this product. They were highlighting their waterproof before. And here's Kerry. But I didn't find the word, you know, here we're talking about diabetes over here, but frankly it was lost to me. Here they added the word insulin. Um, supposedly people who come to the site know, but you'd want to point it out. Anyhow, last night as I was adding links to all of these screens, so that you can click on it and go to their actual site, they changed it again, um, which is fine. Um, a rather different look. Why they did that, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I hope that they did some user testing and uh, determined that they wanted to abandon some of their bright color scheme. Um, they want to push the vibe system now instead of uh, the ping, which is fine. Uh, here's ping down here. Martin, you've yeah. taken yourself off mute. You have something to add? Yes, I was going to let you know something. Lisa's asking if you can go a little bit slow between slides because GoToMeeting has a delay between them. So when you flip between them and start talking about the next one immediately, it's a little confusing. For oh, okay. Thanks for that. You bet. Thanks for the comment, Lisa. And sorry I can't uh, keep track of them both. So thanks for doing that for me, Martin. Um, yes, I'll do that. And uh, we have time, so I can slow down a bit. Here's Positron before. I'll pause to give you a chance to look at it. And after. Um, they didn't change what they did materially. Um, I think that there's a lot of missed opportunity on this page, because really, is their news the most important? And not only that, but it's at least a year old. Um, and the comma's in the wrong place. Silly stuff like that says, you know, pay more attention. Uh, it's about cardiovascular PET technology. Okay, that's, that's all I got from this page. Mako, as you know, got bought out. So here's uh, before and here's after. Really a lot of the same elements, uh, which I think is good. It shows consistency and uh, actually I was surprised to see how consistent it was given new ownership. Align Technology, this site really hasn't changed very much year over year. Here's 2012, here's 2014, materially the same. They added two more uh, product names that they wanted to highlight. And uh, again, my point isn't uh, necessarily to make a good or bad assessment of every screen, but to very much show you what's out there. and. Uh, the point of the original presentation that I did back in 2012 was that you can look through these and see what elements you like and which ones you don't like as a starting ground if you're uh, rebuilding from scratch. So this site, um, actually when I would show clients the whole uh, deck of all of the sites, they kind of liked this one more often than not. Personally, I didn't particularly like this layout. Um, they were bought out by Lake Region Medical, and you can see here, uh, this is my red mark, our commitment to you. They changed it, but they kept this kind of look until last week when I was putting the final touches on it, and now they've absorbed the excellent name into we'll be doing business as Lake Region, and so it's a completely different URL and look. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the company to know how gradual uh, and how uh, smoothly the transition was. Um, you know, these are just point in time pictures for you. CareFusion uh, didn't change their site very much. But I'm pointing this out for whatever reason, and it was important for them. I don't know what it is. They changed the order. This is their current order of, these are actually sliders, which we talked about. Um, 
All of these move down one, and this one moved up to the top. If surveillance and analytics is the same thing as IT, enterprise IT and analytics, I don't know. Just an observation. Well, challenge site changed quite a bit. Um, and I'll tell you, when I was working at Cardiac Science years and years ago, um, I looked at this site for some inspiration, and I liked this notion of being able to choose who you are and then having content uh, appropriate to that. Here's their current site, which certainly looks more contemporary. Uh, I really don't know what to make of this stuff on the right, these quick tools. Um, they may be helpful, but at a glance, I don't know what they mean, so I suspect I'm not alone. Maybe this is send them an email. I don't know what that security badge means. Wrench, uh, something's broken on the site, ship stuff to me, where's my shipment maybe? I don't know. So if you're going to do that, make sure you let people know what they are. Um, and then they've lost the, the thing that I liked from before, which was, you know, they serve so many different types of folks. I liked how you could pick who you were before, but it's not obvious how to do that on the new site. So uh, I'm sure these were well thought out. I don't know the thinking behind them, but I thought that was interesting. GE Healthcare. Uh, this is 2012, a screenshot that I took. And they changed a lot as well. Here's what I saw up until a few weeks ago. The next slide is what I saw yesterday. Um, this one, personally, I liked. I thought, uh, you know, not every company needs to look as big as they are. They, this site makes them look big, and they are. That's appropriate. Um, here's what they look like as of yesterday. Um, Yes, they still look big. I don't know what the purple's all about. Maybe that's a radiology color in there. Just happening to talk about a show that was um, held recently. Um, they've got all of these. This is kind of slider stuff. Like this is what you could see if you click on all of those. Just showing you. Phillips also changed quite a bit. Uh, I thought this was interesting in 2012, how they had a pop-up of, would you like to participate in what you think of our website? And here's what they look like today. Uh, very, very different. Um, Martin knows the super smart term used for this. You can take yourself off mute and remind me. I never re remember the, the fancy term. Um, but it's, what is it? Skeuomorphic. Skeuomorphic. Um, Tell us what that means in your words. Well, um, the easiest thing would be for those who have had an iOS device, knowing what iOS 6 was versus iOS anything later than 6, or um, what Windows 7 was versus Windows 8. So skeuomorphism is just the concept of having a, a design that correlates with objects in real life. So, you know, the buttons look 3D, the gray uh -huh. looks like a certain thing, you've got, you know, real wood textures, things like that, as opposed to where we've moved today, more with flat design, where everything is just very digital-centric. So. And you would call this one flat or not flat? I would say this one's flatter. Yeah. Um, definitely flatter. Okay. So there's, thank you, Martin, there's a lot of places to go. I'm not sure kind of where the eye would go. Uh, I think there are pluses and minuses on this. Uh, importantly, do your testing. Uh, here's another Philips screen that I captured recently. Um, in fact, this is the one that you would find today. So uh, you'll recognize some of the images from the screen before. And, um, well, I don't have anything more to add about that. It's very attractive. Um, I think it's engaging, and uh, people will at least scroll down and see if they can find what they want. Their primary nav is up here. It's easy to miss, I think. Um, and perhaps when they scroll down, I would hope that this stays 
sticky, that is, stays at the top the whole time, so I can always find my way back. Oops. No, I don't want to go to that site right now. There we go. Abbott. Abbott's site changed more than any other. This is before. This is after. Talk about night and day. Um, it's beautiful. I'll give them that. Um, and again, for, for a big company, I think you can pull this off. If you're a, a smaller medical device company, I'm not sure that this works as well. This is just my point of view. Um, but again, in the spirit of showing you everything that's out there, uh, you can put this in your consideration set. Physio control before and after. Uh, this one was interesting. Uh, they have a slider. This is another one of their uh, slider screens. And this second one makes more sense for me. Um, they're a defibrillation company. The previous one could have been anything. It looks like an iPhone store. Um, be mindful of what that first impression is. Moving on to Malar. This is before. After they changed their entire color palette, I'm not sure why. Um, it's awfully bright. Uh, again, that's Joe's point of view, but that doesn't matter. Um, I don't know. Just kind of a question, a rhetorical question out to you. What do you think? They have a slider in there. And this kind of notion of, you know, today you'll find Millar at the heart of innovation, pushing the limits of accuracy. Ginny would be all over that. Nobody came to read puffery. Just give me the facts that I need so I can move on. Here's Merck's site in 2012, and I actually used it uh, with a client. The client chose this as the basis upon which to build his site. And uh, I liked this notion over here of these photos. Yes, it's kind of slidery, um, but this was more than just dots or arrows. I wanted to see what these were about. Um, and that had more impact, and then you could click here to go to the pages that make sense. Here's Merck today, and up there on top I put um, this, these arrows to show you that uh, they transpose their primary and secondary navigation. Is that a big deal? I don't know. I'm sure it was a conscious effort. Here's what they had before, and they had these here, and then they change them around. So this would be omnipresent and in the blue. Perhaps that makes it more usable. Um, I'm sure perhaps through their testing they know. And then here's some of the, the kind of boxes that they used to have in this area, I suspect. Lanza. Uh, this site also changed a great deal. Um, here's this photo I'll point out to you before I switch to what they're doing today. And they made it all about that. Now, these boxes, actually I wrote here clickable and slider, um, because this is not intuitive. Uh, this link, this is a link and it's clickable. I never would have guessed that. Only through searching and clicking around for this presentation did I bother, but I wouldn't have. These boxes represent what they used to have in 2012, these, but you wouldn't know that. So, yes, it's prettier. Um, they have a lot of things you're trying to communicate. I'm not sure what the best way is. This may be it. Again, pointing out some of the uh, evolution that we're seeing. Allergan Sight did not change very much. There's a picture of their CEO who I had a chance to meet, lovely fellow. And uh, I thought this was a nice job overall. Amblin, Amblin, 
was taken over. So here they are in 2012. And, oops, when I search for them now, this is what I get. They could do better. Here's Village Health in 2012. And here they are in 2014. Their secondary navigation is gone. Uh, they're about kidney disease, apparently, but it's all the way down here. I have to kind of look around because up here in 2012, they talked about kidney disease front and center. And they had this patient or member payers and healthcare professionals. And then in 2014, kidney was gone. Maybe it's in one of these sliders. And they changed this label. I'm sure that was relevant for them. Here's Avenir Medical. And they, I don't know their story. They were either taken over or changed their name, but clearly great rebranding, great in the sense of uh, a material rebranding. Um, their prior name is not on uh, this page at all. Um, so maybe it's been a long time and they phased out the name. I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, for someone, you know, I, I know I'm not their customer, um, but my limited exposure to them, I knew them as Avenir, and I came to this. So maybe in this case you could have a, a special uh, splash screen or a special landing page that says we're now doing business as Intellijoint Surgical, just for a, a smooth transition for somebody know, who knows you under your previous incarnation. Life Technologies, uh, I hope they won't mind me saying this page was a mess in 2012. There was just so much going on. I could check their stock price and join them online. There was links and places I didn't expect. Up until a few weeks ago, this is what their new site looked like. And uh, you see, I thought this was interesting. You could buy something and save 50% right now, and they put that right up here next to the logo where it would get very noticed. Um, but when I was, again, uh, updating last night, I was very surprised to see this landing page for them, which, as you can see, is holiday-themed, and uh, I'm an N of 1. My opinion doesn't matter, but I thought, really? Tis the season for savings for a life sciences company? It, it just didn't seem appropriate. Um, I don't know. You can leave a comment uh, if you agree. I can't read it right now because the screen's too small, but I will look later. Uh, here's Midmark in 2012. And here it is in 2014. Uh, materially the same. They changed their primary nav, and uh, changing your primary navigation is a relatively big deal in terms of recognizing what people are clicking on, so I hope they did that with really good analytics, seeing what pages were important, or they thought through when somebody comes to this home page, what are they looking for, and let's make it really obvious for them to find them. Here's Roach in um, 2012, and these were clickable for different stories, and while it was pretty, I don't think that was particularly effective. And here they are today with a very different look. Um, looks like a big company. Um, and I don't have a lot more to add. I think it's a nice job. Is Ardia Biosciences before and after pretty much the same? Uh, 
they were bought out by AstraZeneca as well. And uh, I didn't dig deep enough, but I suspect, you know, here's a link for AstraZeneca. I don't know how they integrated it, but at least I was able to find them. Uh, so I was pleased that they have this, uh, this page. Santaris before and after they were bought out in August of 2014 and they had this box here and I thought this was very nicely done and then I looked them up again last night and I got this and I thought this was terrible, really terrible. Um, this is what I got looking up that company. So it's like, am I in the right place? And if the word Santaris is somewhere on this page, I don't immediately know where it is. This is not a good user experience. I would probably leave and think I'm in the wrong place. Stem cell in 2012. stem cell today, slider, new products, I thought that was good over here. Tandem Diabetes, 2012, the 2014 in my view looks far more contemporary, I like very much what they did. Here are their social sharing buttons. They've changed, I think, their uh, primary nav there. These are all clickable, I suspect. And uh, just a little bit of copy, I think that's appropriate. And giving you lots of jumping off places to find out more. Here's Pfizer in 2012. It uh, was the basis for a uh, client site I developed. They, they uh, like this one the most. And here they are today. Much different look. They introduced this orange color. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how that came about. Um, I don't know. I guess I'd be interested in what you think. And here's Sandgard in 2012. Mm, they didn't do as well. This, I'm afraid, is their website today, which is to say there is no website. That's all I found out when I searched them. So, if I if the team if the team exists at all, I would try to have something other than this be the number one result. You know, if there's any kind of continuation. So those are the 33 uh, that I captured from before and what they're doing today. Uh, these are clickable. Um, later today I'll have all of these slides available for you. I'll send you an email when it is ready and uh, I may have the replay ready at that time too. I'll have a transcript prepared. So now I'm just going to give a little tough love to a friend or two who are on this call. This is my friend Jan's site. And I think Jan is in Minneapolis right now laughing. She gave me permission to show this. Um, this looks like a site for a mortuary. Um, we have angels bringing this company to heaven and your friendly morticians are standing by. Uh, it's copyright 2012, don't do that. Um, at a minimum, you can put in some PHP code. Ask me if you don't know what that means, and I'll ask Martin, because he does, um, so that it automatically updates. Um, and my advice to her, not only is we need to talk, was here's a simple site that I made for a, a friend, Margie Flagg, who is in consulting and qualitative research. 
this is a one person place. It's not my fanciest work, but it's clean and it has pictures of her, not stock photography because people want to work with her. Um, a place that you can, oh look, it's me. Uh, a place that you can add your email address, a little bit about her, and this, this link I know takes you to a whole laundry list of categories she's been in. Um, so at a minimum, this is really inexpensive to do, uh, and perhaps some of you uh, one-person operations who are thinking they need a new website. I'm not saying you need to have a Roche site or a Merck site, uh, but something simple and clean, I think, especially uh, folks who are one or two people. Show your faces. You are the people that we're contacting, so uh, let us know that you're living, breathing, and approachable. I won't spend any time on this except to say that, uh, yes, this exists. It's live right now. It was last revised on October 29, 2004, so that's good to know. I am visitor number 24,729. Don't do that. And the reason this looks hazy up here is because this is uh, something that goes scrolling across my screen, giving me no time to read it. I just wanted to show you that whatever you think your site is, um, there's worse out there, just so you know. And then uh, Stryker uh, was interesting to me because uh, two folks wrote in, took the survey, and both ranked the Stryker site as terrible. And uh, I probed, and one of them said, we hear consistently from our customers how difficult and unhelpful our website is. I don't know where to begin, except to say that I recognize Stryker's a huge company. It's probably just a colossal matrix organization to get a new website through, but if your customers are telling you this, you've got to respond. Uh, if you want to work together, there's a link, and you can uh, email me about the new conference or, well, anything, because I'm very approachable and reachable. So now I will take some comments. Do I have a recorded webinar regarding SEO? And no, Jen, I don't have that, but I do have uh, a lot of content on Medical Marcom, and you're welcome to uh, check it out there. Justin asks, is this webinar geared towards major medical device manufacturer websites or geared? Um, my answer, Justin, is it's geared for everybody uh, who has a website. Um, be found, be engaging, and um, collect information. Just I wanted to show you uh, what's out there so that as you consider what, what you build, you can kind of take a sample of, of what everyone else is doing. The, the notion that I made on uh, the first uh, recording that I did a year or two ago is, um, well, I've lost my train of thought. What was I saying? That's silly. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, Julie asks, is the usability hub the app? Uh, if you meet, okay, Julie and Martin, thank you for answering that. Uh, Usability Hub is a place that you can do some testing. You can do that for free. And the app for the um, pop-up is called Opt-in Monster, I think. Not very classy, but it works. Okay, Dennis, can you put the download the link? Monster is one of the best out there. One of the best out there. I, I agree. And I'm seeing a lot of other people doing it, too. Yeah. Um, did all sites have Facebook and Twitter for social settings, a YouTube channel as well? Uh, Jen, no, not everybody does. And I don't recommend that everybody uh, use Facebook and Twitter. Some, but only if you're actually going to use it. There's nothing lamer than going to 
a Facebook page because you had a link to go to it and there's nothing there, or a Twitter feed that has five comments. If you're not going to do it, don't do it. If you are going to do it, do it the right way, and that's beyond the scope of what we can cover today. Okay. Subrat asks, what is the typical price range for a one to five page website? Um, I don't have a straight answer for you because uh, I think of it this way. The, the website itself is a function of the strategy that goes into it and what you're trying to accomplish. So, for example, I, I showed you the, the one that my friend Margie did. Uh, she already had a website, and we just redesigned it to make it look appropriate, contemporary, approachable. You could probably do that for one to two thousand dollars with uh, with most vendors. You could you can uh, accomplish that, I would say. Um, but the heavy lifting comes before you start doing any coding or any pictures or any copy, and that is. What is your customer looking for? And uh, what do you hope they do when they uh, arrive at your website? Prashant, hi Joe, can you tell us the importance of layouts use visually F-shaped layout? I'm sorry, Prashant, would you ask the question again? I don't follow you. Julie asks, are you in the business of ongoing website maintenance, or do you redesign and build and then hand it off to someone else? Uh, thanks for that question, Julie. Um, typically, I'm engaged on the front end, and um, I've built every site that I've done since I've been out on my own for four years in, uh, in WordPress, which is, uh, Martin, help me here, it is clearly the, the number one platform for websites yeah, it, it's the number one self-hosted content management system on the internet. By far. And uh, I like it especially because you don't necessarily need to keep Joe on retainer for it. It's, it's the, uh, the Word and Excel of the web development uh, community. You can find anybody who can uh, upkeep for you. Um, so, as needed and... Uh, I have favorite clients that I keep forever and ever, and others, you know, when we're done, we're, we're done. So it really depends. Hey, Paul. Paul asks, do we know what percentage of users are now accessing websites versus smartphone or tablet versus de desktop? And the answer is yes. Uh, you can find that in Google Analytics. Um, I can tell you that the, the site I monitor most closely myself is my 10x site, and two-thirds of my visitors are coming uh, from a desktop. Um, I suspect that's pretty normal. Martin, do you have a... I mean, Facebook, I think, is far more on mobile because you just, you know, it's just a different user experience. I don't imagine, you know, I know your business, Paul. Uh, I don't imagine there are a lot of radiologists or, or engineers who are going to be looking up your site on, on their smartphone, but they might on their tablet. Um, depending on the size of the screen, perhaps you can get away with a desktop experience on a tablet, uh, but you might choose to trim it down a little bit, um, but we can talk about that offline. Kurt, yeah, yes. just for my, Go ahead. Okay. Well, no, I was going to say, um, one rule of thumb I'm seeing about 30% of, in, in Google Analytics, you can see the breakdowns on this, but about 70% is desktop, 30% is other, depending on, I mean, that, as just kind of a general rule of thumb. Um, if you're in portrait mode on a tablet, you probably still want mobile, but if you're in landscape mode on a tablet, you might get mindless showing the desktop version of it. But it's definitely nice, especially if your numbers are closer to that 30% range, to have an alternative to just the desktop experience. Agreed. Uh, Kurt asks, you've had mixed comments about sliders. How do you suggest a company maximize and correctly use sliders? Um, Joe, I threw in that link there in the comments. Of I the saw race. that. For the benefit of the folks on the, on the call, what's your view on that? 
Well, and for reference, folks, I, I didn't properly introduce Martin. Martin has been with me for three years now uh, and uh, has developed almost every site that I've worked on. So he's he's part of my extended team and uh, a member of the family, really. So, uh, Martin, what uh, what did you say about sliders? I think a lot of site owners like them because it's kind of a validation thing of, yes, we have the chops and the know-how to have a slider on a home page. It makes me feel good. But the sad thing is when you look at the actual numbers of what converts and what works for, for user flows, that Notre Dame study shows that 84% of clicks that happen on a slider happen on the first slide. So how... How would you advise a client who says, I want a slider? Would you first try to talk them out of it? I would, yes. If yeah, I think it, we can always build it, but it's more of a make them feel good thing than it is an actual, this is going to yeah. be needle on your home page. So uh, I'm trying place. to think. I'm going to do some quick scrolling here. Um, and there are... There are better alternatives these days to a I mean, even this one, this isn't a, a slider, but, you know, if you wanted to show that you do four things, here's a way to do it. Um, after the presentation, when you download the PDF, uh, Curtis, you may find something that, that makes sense for you uh, that's contemporary. Okay. Uh, where was I? You bet. Simon. Hey, Simon. In your opinion, what is the best platform for a new site and mobile site? Oh, I'm all over WordPress. I do everything in WordPress. Caroline asks, when you talk about different formats for different devices, are you suggesting completely different websites for yeah, Caroline, um, it's an exhausting answer, but um, I'm not saying a, a completely different website, but the code is different. Um, there's there's code on the back end that, that determines the, well, Martin, you're smarter about this. Answer that for us. Sure. So usually what we do is what's called responsive design to where the the actual content is just changing from a design standpoint and but the, most of the content is still there. If you had a more involved website, and I've been on a project or two in which this was the case, you can have a completely separate WordPress theme. That's the active theme based on the what device people are browsing on. So if you had a if you had a more involved website, you could say, okay, not only is our our you know, HTML or our, you know, our CSS can be different, but our actual content's going to be different too. So you've got a couple of options depending on how deep into it you need to get. Usually, though, I'd say for probably 90% of people, responsive design is all that you need. So, so are you saying that you could, you could build the desktop responsively and therefore mitigate the need to have a separate mobile set of? Correct. Okay. Now, in fairness, most big companies like Twitter and Google and things like that do not use responsive design that much. They do have a completely separate code base for everything. And so when mm -hmm. you ping that on mobile, you're sent either to a different domain or else it's just happening programmatically in the back end. Mm -hmm. But that's also, you have to keep in mind, they also have much more substantial budgets and can maintain distinct right. more easily that way. Yeah, budget is what it comes down to. I mean, we, we talked about it before. I... I'm debating whether, and I know loud and clear your point of view on this, Martin, but I'm debating whether or not to invest anything in accommodating old um, Internet Explorer folk. I mean, it's like at some point you just say, I'm sorry, I don't support that anymore. Go get a real browser. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I know, for example, uh, in a hospital, you know, if I'm if I'm a nurse and I'm trying to access a site, I have absolutely no administrative privileges whatsoever. And you know, to get my IT director to update my browser is almost impossible. So, you know, it is what it is. If I can't access it, I can't access it. Um, so, do you accommodate those people or not? It's up to you and and what your your budget is. Uh, Prashant, thank you. Uh, hi, Joe. 
Uh, scientific studies show that web surfers read in an F pattern, yes. Upper top, yes. So F pattern is, uh, I know of it as the golden triangle, which is, you know, this top left and you read across and basically, uh, at least in, uh, in our culture where we read from left to right, that's how people approach websites. Uh, only occasionally taking glances towards the right side of the screen. So how different layouts can be useful? Um, so I understand the point you made, but I'm sorry, Prashant, I still don't understand your question if you want to clarify again. Uh, Jen asks, is there a better giveaway on a website than others in general, i.e., a recorded video webinar versus what? Uh, Jen, that really is a function of who your visitors are and what you want them to do. And, you know, talk to your sales folks. You know, the, a website is a proxy for a human. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, if you were face-to-face -face with your prospect, what would you talk about? How would you try to persuade them? That's what you want to do on a website. Uh, thank you, Kurt. Uh, Carolyn, I think I got your question answered. Evan, I'm in the middle of a new site development project. Would you mind giving some feedback? I'd be happy to. Um, thoughts, suggestions for using protected or secure pages versus a, a primary website or a separate microsite for Brian. Um, Brian, what I would do is uh, typically in the secondary navigation, you could put something like log in and direct those people uh, to it. But most folks are going to um, just come to the site, not carefully look around for that type of stuff. So be sure that the that you have a fair, unprotected presence so people can get an idea about it. Don't lock everything behind uh, a window um, that you need to, because most people will just uh, abandon. Um, can I mind. jump in on that? Sure. Show? Yes, um, please. On, on Brian's thing there. Um, Usually it's really, really a good idea, in my experience, to have your protected content distinct from your primary website. So you say separate microsite, I think that's a great idea. So if you have example.com, then you go and you create members.example.com. And that way you can put your SSL certificate just on the members dot version and because you cannot have caching on SSL websites, so you cache your main primary website and then you have non cached Locked down HTTPS members dot or whatever your your subdomain is. I think it's a great idea having having those things distinct, and then having like Joe said, a little login link on your primary website that links to that that microsite. Caroline asks, do I suggest putting user manuals on websites? Yes. Simon says, do I feel testimonials, comments are worthwhile homepage inclusion for a startup? Uh. Yes, I think so, um, but it varies. I mean, it's it's a competition for space. What's the most valuable thing uh, to put on your page? Um, on Medical Marcom, I have testimonials on my homepage and elsewhere. Um, frankly, when I get around to redesigning the site in 2015, I might take them off. I might keep them, um, you know, as just a kind of a divider for a little bit of color. Um, but, yeah, if you can get uh, named folks to, uh, to celebrate what you're doing, uh, it's good social proof. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to cut off the questions here so I stay faithful to the hour. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, you can reach me at jhage at medicalmarcom.com with any questions you may have. And as I shared, I will be uh, creating a transcript, a replay of this, and you'll have the slides very shortly. Thank you very much for joining me today. Be well.